Well, hello guys, and welcome to the final and seventh episode in our endeavor of building this Dragon Stook 3 all the way from start to finish. Just a quick heads up, this is going to be a rather long 45 minute extravaganza here. So if you have any plans for later, either pause the video and watch it later or just postpone your plans. So without further ado, here we go. The first thing we want to do is build up the fighting compartment. The interior, for example, some hand grenade racks, some ammo storage bins, and just some overall storage that the crew could use for all sorts of things within their vehicle. This, for example, right here is a storage bin for the armor piercing rounds and you can see them already when you when you look at the the box from the top you can see the bottom of the shells actually the thing i'm working on right now is a storage rack for the german hand grenades so called stielhandgranate and you can already see those wooden sticks on the underside of those hand grenades it's a two piece assembly have to glue on the lid and then you're good to go. Since I'm only going to have one hatch of the vehicle open and the commander in it, I am not going to bother painting the interior, or at least not the front part of the interior. So while I'm building this and while I'm gluing it in the vehicle, I'm not going to be painting this so I left off a photo etch piece on that hand grenade storage rack. What I thought was interesting was that the fighting compartment floor is a three-piece assembly. On earlier Panzer or other Panzer threes and Stug threes that I've built from Dragon, this piece was always a one-piece thing, and you did not have to glue it together from three pieces, which I think is convenient because lining these up straight isn't very easy. And in one second, you will see that I messed up big time. Or not messed up big time, but I was blind, and you'll see in just a second. I don't want to spoil it because the, the 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 moment is going to be so so beautiful. Because I am going to be convinced that the instructions are messed up, while it's just me not reading the instructions properly. One one more thing I want to mention here is I'm trying to record this voiceover in one go so if I mess up and if I use I don't know too many ums or as I'm sorry but I'm not gonna go over this twice or three times to edit everything out this is a one-time recording of the voiceover so here we have the back wall of the fighting compartment there's no nudge here that would help you align this it more or less is just well look at the instruction and then figure out how it goes so and as you can see here I'm trying to try fit this to the halt up and yeah now I am complaining yes the suspension like the torsion bars are in the way of this fighting compartment floor going in there here's the thing and here you can see yeah the, it's not the back wall that's the problem it's this torsion bar and I was I was angry with the instructions. I was like, yeah, Dragon just messed this up, they forgot to have this in their instructions, blah de blah And now watch me go back through the instructions in just a second, the first page, just to realize that I am a stupid idiot that did not actually see that they tell you to take out that specific torsion bar. I was just once again being a smartass. There you go, like me lamenting the torsion bar, what were they thinking, blah, blah, blah. And actually I should have been angry at myself. And and you'll see this. As you can see here through the hatch, you cannot see much of the interior. And we still have the issue with the gap underneath the fender. Which we will be solving in this, this final episode. So, 
Yeah, this should align to the left of the vehicle, according to the instructions. This should go right there, as you can see. And now I'm going back, and there it is! So oh, stupid me. Yeah, they told me to remove the piece! I was just not paying close enough attention. Which is kind of a heads up from me to you guys. Pay attention when you read those dragon instructions because they can be rather vague. One more thing about this video. Before condensing it and speeding up the video files to like four times time lapse speed, it was about three hours that this final bits and bobs assembly took me because I went back and I checked and I saw that some of the th things were still missing and I had to check up on them and then I did them at a later stage but you will see about that in just a minute here now we are actually starting the assembly of the gun itself And for some weird reason, this, I think it's the gun stabilizer, is a three-piece assembly again. Normally you would have this as a one, like, just one solid piece, but here it's a three-piece assembly with two small pieces that go underneath the main piece, and you have to align them properly to make it fit. I think there are some, they, they took the parts from other Stugs. Be but because this is an early stuck, there were some modifications to the interior, so their normal parts wouldn't fit. While I was building this, it was roughly 35 degrees outside. Which is why I was sweating so much, and of course the the desk lights I use also create a lot of warmth and temperature and heat, so that's also why I was sweating a bit while I was doing this. And then of course I have to lose weight, because, duh, I have to lose weight. For health safety, uh, sakes. And, and this again is, is so interesting, and I, I said something about this in the... Kiryu that I did, you really don't like things like this where you have to cut your piece in half with dimensions given in the instructions because this is like just be one millimeter off and you just or half a millimeter and you just screw it. So I'm using the cutting mat because the cutting mat basically has like millimeter ten millimeter lines there. So, yeah, I can just use those. I don't need a straight edge or a ruler for that. And then you have to add a second part just to make this fit. Again, I don't know why they couldn't engineer this specifically for this kit, but have you kind of glue this together from two pieces. Because I think they actually did engineer the second half of this. So why not just engineer the entire part? And then this goes underneath our, well, let's call it gun table, or at least the gun mount here where the gun is mounted within the fighting compartment and can swivel at least a bit. I think 40 degrees was the swivel and the rotation on these, these stuck guns. And then there we have it. It's built up, aligned, worked out, didn't make a mess cutting the piece in two and adding the other half. So, here I thought, yeah, let's put in the hand grenade rack. Seal it up, take a look how it looks. Yeah, you still can't see much. The only thing that really bothered me was the fact that on these stooks you have the gunner's sight in the front left of the fighting compartment and you can actually see the the opening in the fighting compartment for the gunner's sight but there's no sight behind it so it's basically empty behind it 
And if you look closely through it, you can actually see it. So we've now finished the first 10 minutes of this 45 minute deal. And if you're still watching this, thank you so much, first and foremost. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like. It helps a lot. You can see the hole there in the front of the fighting compartment next to the hole where the gun is mounted. And that would be the, the sight for the gunner. And here you can see me trying to line this up properly, which it still doesn't because of the raced protrusions from the hull tub that I've talked about at length in this build series. Here we have the gun breach. The detailing is quite lovely, I have to say, but you sadly won't see much of it once the vehicle is finished and put together. Won't be seeing much of this. The breach lock. Being put in place here. I was considering replacing the gun barrel that comes with a kit with the with an aftermarket barrel, but then I said, no, I'm just going to build this out of the box. If I'm going to add stowage later on, that's that's perfectly fine, but. Just use the kit parts where you can use the kit parts. So, this part for some weird reason wasn't really fitting all that well and wasn't properly aligning because, again, the the parts basically did, or the instructions basically told you where to put it, but there was no, let's say, alignment point where you could slot it in. So, it was kind of wonky and moving around, so when I glued this part in place here at least it gave it some stability but it was still not to the level where I was like okay yeah I'm happy with this so I, I don't know but I, I have the feeling that lately Dragon's engineering has taken a dip a bit but that might just be me either getting older or just being I don't know complacent is that a word here yeah I think that's the word complacent with being used to what Dragon used to be when it comes to engineering. Just a heads up, I recently got the border models Panzer IV GF2 in, and I'm going to be filming a review of this. As far as I know, there's only one review out there yet, which is from uh, MBK, in a German model shop. So, yeah, if you want to see the plastic from the box and want to see what this border models Panzer IV looks like on the sprues tune in I can't tell you exactly when this video is going to um, come up but it should be soon looking forward to doing the review I was really happy with the other border models Panzer IV G that I built earlier this year or actually late last year so maybe I'm going to do something similar, like build it up and then do an after build review as well as a pre-build review. So we'll see about this. While I'm talking about other kits, we are right now building the shell, or the recoil guard for our gun, which basically protects our commander and our loader 
from having their legs taken off by the recoil of the gun breech. Some gun stabilizers, which you will not be seeing on the finished model, and I will tell you why, because I want to cover the, the gap between the gun and the fighting compartment, which is rather visible on a stook with either an air recognition flag or with a tarp because I, th I really like these these covers for this this hole because basically if it rains water and, and, and humidity can get into the fighting compartment and I really doubt that the crews would really like that if it gets moist within the fighting compartment so yeah I want to cover this up and since I have the nice air recognition flags from Gable Design Maybe it's going to be a nice touch to have them sit over that crevice. So here we have the actual gun mount and the lafette that basically carries the gun. I don't know if it's called a lafette within a tank or not. Not not a tank expert like on tank lingo. If you haven't yet noticed. And as you can see, the sprue actually has another fighting compartment floor on it, but it would not fit this stook specifically, so I had to build up this three piece floor that we built up earlier. And right here, I'm just gluing on the elevation handle, the Trevor's handle, the manual Trevor's, the manual elevation, as well as the actual trigger. And a small part that is actually part of the vision or the gun sight, which then is missing from the kit entirely. So I'm a bit disappointed that there is no gun sight here. We had the nice scissor binoculars earlier that we had to fold, like that we built, folded in, but there's no sight for this gun. This is the gunner seat that we're putting in place here. Put that to the side. Now we're building up the second half of this, which does not carry as much detail. Some cleanup is required because I think there are five attachment points to the sprue. Here we are gluing one half in place first, then we are then we add the the gun assembly that we built up earlier, put that in place, then we put the other half in place, line them up properly, and there we go. Glue them together. This way our gun is still movable when it comes to elevation. And that's all we need. Now, you will see me come across one more problem. I glued together the fighting, fi fighting compartment and defenders in the step before, like last week's video. And this is going to mess up part of the gun assembly in a rather large way, but you'll see in just a second. So. All we still still have to do, since we reached half of halfway of this video, is now build up the outside of the gun assembly as well. And here you can see the problem. I can now no longer fit this over the gun without disassembling this. And even in disassembled mode, it's tough to get this through so I had to cut off these well the parts that take up the front glasses so before we tackle this let's just build up the gun which again we need to take apart as you can see in the instructions I need to take out one millimeter here 
to then add something else. So now that we've had reached a half the halfway point of this video, I think it's once again time for me to say thank you to all of you who have been following this build series all the way from start to now the finish and the final episode. So thank you so much. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, like the video, it helps out a lot. And here again, it's really not easy to perfectly align this and to have this now cut in half gun barrel come together again in a straight fashion or in the way that you really want it to be. So yeah, once again, I'm not sure why they do this, to be honest. And here you can, you will, you will see me think about some things here and then just say, well, screw you. Because as you can see, now I can no longer fit this in there. <laughs> and now here comes, here comes smart me, uh, taking off the interior part of the gun barrel. And that way we can fi fit this in there. So yeah, still not working, still not working, fumbling, 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 being an idiot, being an idiot again. No idea how to do this. No, still won't work. Okay, let's take off the interior part. And here we go. We have now <laughs> managed to do this properly. Yeah, that was probably not the, the best and smartest way to do this. That I just just it took there so don't do this at home don't glue everything together like together before you assemble everything and then just can fit everything together and you can glue everything together that way i think it is a lot more easy and a lot easier no, not a lot more easy my english is, is lacking tonight i'm sorry it's a lot easier to get everything to align and to get everything together And we're nearing completion of the gun assembly. Now all we have to do is build up some of the armored protection here for our gun. And then we can actually add this to the rest of our stuck and then almost have a completed stuck. The smart ones may have already noticed. Next up would be tracks and yay the s tracks and i was so tempted to replace these i have to be i have to be perfectly honest i was so tempted to replace these but fools would have taken a while to get in and i really wanted to finish this and like i said i really wanted to do this out of the box and i wasn't the smartest person here I glued them together, then I let them dry for I think half an hour, which was way too short. And then I tried to put them on, and you will see me trying to put these on in just a second. Which... There you can see me thinking, well, I think this might actually f be a bit tight. I tried to put them on way too quickly and they almost tore the shreds because I put them on way too quickly I didn't let them cure remotely long enough so now I let them sit for an entire night and now we can see after repairing them if they now will fit and they will but they are tight as hell they are very very tight so one or two millimeters shorter and it would not have fit you 
will not be able to build a lot of track sag with these these DS tracks. I'm perfectly honest here. They won't allow you to to have track sag with these DS tracks, even if you use like the pin method or something. It's just they are too short to properly do this. So I'm still considering replacing them in the long run, upgrading them to metal tracks. I really am not not happy with the S to be honest. And here I am considering if I want to add this piece. And I have to be perfectly honest, I'm glad I did in the end, because I found a picture of the actual stuck of Michael Whitman that actually had this kind of stowage in the front of the tank. So I am really, really happy that I then decided to ultimately go with this. And as you can see here, I am now adding the mesh covers for the air intakes, which for some weird reason I totally had forgotten at the earlier stage. And I will be doing even more photo etch here in a second because for some weird reason I had always postponed the photo etch and thought, well, we'll come back to this anyways because we don't want to damage it. And yeah, that's why we're adding this at this point now. So here we go. And as you can see, it's quite annoying to get this all disassembled again. And now we have to, to add these. And then again, I was really not a smart person in doing these. Because the second one I totally messed up. And again, we have my super glue... locked up. First off, wrong side. I really do know why I don't like photo etch. I always screw up the photo etch. I don't know why, I just can't seem to handle it. Maybe I'm too clumsy. Maybe it's because I'm not... I don't have the highest rate of concentration and I give up way too early and then I get get frustrated so quickly and just try to hurry through things. We have now almost reached 30 minutes and I think before editing this was already like one and a half to almost two hours that it took me to, to get here from, from where we started and as you can see now this won't fit because of the, the fighting compartment that took too much off. I should have just taken off the, the edge there because now it's way too short and it looks totally off. As you can see there, it's way too short. I took off too much. There's my hairy head. Yeah, stupid me. That wasn't smart. But you won't be able to see it anyways once the engine deck goes on because the air intakes basically, basically cover them. So, I, I, I kind of get bailed out there. And here, for some weird reason, I decided, let's just glue this together. Let's just do this. And before I did this, I actually was like, no, this is not good. I actually took off these protruding pieces of styrene from the, from the hull tub. Because now... And you will see this. At least I can I can seal this up. But still the fender support struts are misaligned. So I have to either take them off and re like realign them later. Or just cover them in mud like crazy so you can't see. Which is also an option because this was in use in Russia. So yay! Some dig uh, thick dig, yeah. Some thick black brownish Russian mud on them. I think would look good. So, half an hour gone, 
thank you for sticking with this video. If you've made it so this far, you guys are, are truly champions. And I appreciate you so, so much for sticking around. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, like the video. Helps out a lot. Allows me to make more content like this. More long-ish videos. So, yeah. I really enjoy these kind of the build series, but yeah, I, I, I won't be able to make them. Or, I don't know, I, like, I don't see a reason to make them for... don't want to watch them so thank you for supporting me thank you for sticking with this video even though the numbers have gone down I, I, I still know that some of you really like this I want to see this so we have a stuck now Houston we have a stuck it's a bit of a crooked stuck in some areas which is both due to me messing things up as well as dragon having shoddy and weird instructions in some areas in some places but now at least the body of the stook is complete all that is left to do is add some small ish details like these fender supports that go underneath there and then connect fender to hull even more this time to lower hull and they weirdly did actually align so maybe it is supposed to be a bit crooked Maybe that's battle damage from the box, I don't know. You actually do see it. When you stand in front of it, you can actually see it, so... It's not perfect. In the slightest, but... I think I can cover the areas where it's really visible. With either mud, stowage, or something else. So, yeah. Let's put everything together. Let's see what this looks like. Was my... My thought process here. There are still some, some, some small photo edge pieces missing at this point. For example, like the the locks for the, the the hatches on top of the fighting compartment, which are small photo edge parts that I then added at a later stage. And you can see with this track run as well, the fit is really tight. There's not a lot of leeway here. So, yeah. We have a completed stoke now, let's see, what are we missing? Yes, we're missing this little small piece of photo edge on top of the engine deck. Let's just add this and then all we are missing is the photo edge wire. No, it's not wires actually, but I think it's chains on the on the S mine launchers in the back. On the smoke mine launchers. And with that, all we need to do is add some stowage to cover up some things. And before we can put on the stowage, I do have to glue down the gun barrel for some weird reason. Because otherwise it falls off. So let's glue this down. And then I have to remove these parts that actually are used for... the tow eyelets, but first let's complete the superstructure. Yeah, here we go. That's in part in place. Next up, stowage. So I take off these towing eyelets attachment points, because otherwise the stowage won't fit. Save them off. Take the big chunks off with my Xuron cutters and then take the rest off with the hobby knife. And then we just super glue the stowage on before, after we clean some of the resin off of it because there's some imperfections. Almost broke the antenna there. Luckily I didn't. me a while before I had this resin part aligned properly 
I'm still not 100% sure if it actually was designed for a Stuck or a Panzer III, but I think it's for an early Panzer III, so it should have fit a little bit better than it actually ended up doing, but it is looking nice. As you can see, it's still not stuck to the tank, so let's put it like this so it can cure. Only 10 minutes left to go, guys. Then you've done it. And you've managed to survive this video. The only thing that's left for me here is to build up the big front headlights with the armored headlight ca casings and attach them to the resin part. It's nice to have a, a tub of mod parts sitting around because you can use this to, to lean your stuck on it if you want to do something in the front of the tank. Or actually, assault gun. It's not a tank, it's an assault gun. Armored assault gun. You can see the armored housings for the front headlights. And there we have it. So now all that's missing, as you can see, there are small indentations on the resin part, the resin stowage. That actually houses spare roll wheels. But if you remember correctly, when we built the fenders earlier on, I left off the stowage bins in the back of the fenders because I was sure that they would protrude with or get in the way of the engine deck. And now we can actually put them in place, align them properly. I think they add a lot to the back of the vehicle. Makes it a lot more interesting. Gotta say. If you like it. Oh look! Nice haircut, dude! Actually not. Lucky you can't see the dendruff. Sadly the kit does not come with spare road wheels, so I had to help myself. Luckily I had some spare, spare road wheels from other early Panzer III's, although they are the wider ones, so actually they don't match the, the Stug itself, but as you can see here I still had two lying around, quickly built them up, put them there, and they will do for now, maybe I'll have to get the smaller like... There are two early wheels for Panzer III's, the white ones and the smaller ones that go with the narrower tracks. So, yeah. Maybe I have to replace these with the narrow ones if I can find some in my spare parts bin or in, in a kit that I have lying around, so we'll see about this. But these at least are the early Panzer III wheels. So they do look nice in that place on the kit. We are nearing completion. If I was allowed to use it, I would be using the final countdown by Europe now as the background music, but then again I would get a copyright claim and could not monetize the video and yeah, no. Here we are! We have now officially completed this vehicle, I think. We are now done, except for adding more stowage. And to fit this, I had to take off one of these support struts there for the fender, but that's about it. Here we are. Done now. Here we are. We have now officially finished this Stuk 3. It took us seven steps to get to where we are. It was a process of trials and tribulations. We have added some stowage. Other than that, this is actually built straight from the box. I still have to attach the wires here in the back, but 
we can do this before painting. And in just a second, I'll show you this even closer on a turntable. Because I felt that this would show you the details a bit better. You can see the two pieces of stowage that we added. One is by Value Gear, the other by Panzer Art. You can see the rope wheels there in the running gear, as well as the DS tracks. Again, missing missing chains there. In just a second, I will be zooming into to, to Mr. Whitman's to show you the figure detail. Overall, I really like the way how this stowage actually adds to the overall look of this kit. I really do. I have to say, overall, I think the kit is a nice piece of kit. It's not Dragon's best kit, but it's, it's, it's decent. There could be some things that they could have done better, engineering-wise. For example, like on the interior pieces and on the fenders, as you can see, there's still this hole in the track changing tool. So I have to figure out a way to do this. You can see some of the surface details and me flooding the model in too much paint, uh, too much glue. You can see some of the detail on Whitman. You'll see a better shot of him from the front. There's actually a small piece of styrene dust on the hatch that's not an imperfection it's just dust as you can see i use too much glue here on the access hatches for the engine i can still actually um, fold down the the bolts there and as you can see this hole is still there still have to figure out what to do with that and you can actually see some imperfections on the stowage bin in the back um, but once this is painted and once it's primed you won't be able to see them and now all I wanted to do, sorry for, oh, yeah, seasickness. See some of the nice weld, weld seams there and the gun assembly. There is this empty hole where the gun side would be. And I want to cover this, this gap there between gun and superstructure with a tarp or an air recognition flag. And there's the empty gun side hole. And here's Mr. Whitman. And I have been told to always listen to Mr. Whitman, so I would like if you actually listened to Mr. Whitman, who has a very, very special message for you guys. And yeah, he gets a bit cloudy, he drank too much beer, I think. But keep in mind to always listen to Mr. Michael Whitman. There's the stowage from Value Gear, some of the minute detail and like I said earlier I messed up some of the things on this kit because I used too much glue because I got impatient overall I still like the way it came out it's going to be a nice subject for the painting and weathering guide because according to the survey i started on my community channel you guys really want to see me do a weathering and painting guide similar to this building guide on this took and like i said i will do exactly that i don't know when it will happen it's not going to be now i need to take a break from this i need to do some other stuff but we'll come back to this and we'll do a painting and weathering guide step by step i'll film every last bit of the way and you can see everything and like I said, I really am thinking of covering this with an air recognition flag, which you can then like adhere and, and make fit to all the crevices. And yeah, um, yeah, as you can see, you can't really show this off without actually using glue. And I don't want to glue it down now because then I would lose paint once I start painting this. And I don't really want to repaint this. But yes, this is the look I am going for. And again, here you have a wide shot of the completed stuck. It's now time for me to once again thank you for watching all seven installments of this series. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for all the comments, for all the likes, all the new subscribers, all of you who have been following this build along for the last, I'd say, almost five hours of this build series in total. We roughly have five hours of, of video footage. Thank you for almost 
watching all of it, if you have, if you're still watching, you are a true champion for sitting here watching me ramble on for 45 minutes and building this stuff. Thank you so much. I am deeply indebted to you guys. I see you guys soon. This is Holland Modeling. Bye for now, and may the force be with you.